Christian, to be born again. First of all, I, you need to acknowledge you're a sinner. How much you are aware of your sin, maybe very little, maybe you think only two or three rooms in your house are dirty, never mind. Actually, all your house is dirty, all the thousand rooms are dirty, but maybe you don't see it. But you see that there's dirt, sin in your life, you're wrong, even a little child, little children know that they've done wrong things. That's the first thing, acknowledge it, come to the light and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm not a Christian, I'm a sinner. I'm not coming to you as a Christian, I come to you as a sinner. Then, do you recognize that that sin has to be punished? You have to go to hell. That's the punishment. Even for one sin. That's what you need to recognize. Lord, I deserve hell for my sin. I may not be as bad as the murderer and the thief and the adulterer, but I've also sinned. I've violated your law. And the Bible says if you violate one law, it's as bad as... Um, if you've got a good chicken curry, how many lizards do you have to put inside to spoil it? Ten? Twenty? Or one? Supposing you put only one, another fellow put a five hundred. You say my curry is better than yours. Yours is unfit for eating too. How many drops of poison do you need in a glass of milk to corrupt it? One drop or twenty drops? One? Enough to kill? One sin makes you as much a sinner as someone who has committed five hundred or five million. Because sin is poison. It's polluted your whole system. So don't compare yourself with others. Finish with that today. Lord, I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. See, if you don't take this position, if right at the beginning you think you're a little better sinner than the other fellow, I've got only two lizards in my curry and he's got ten, or I put only three drops of poison in my glass, he put five hundred. This, these are the type of Christians who never make progress. Twenty years later, they'll still be like that. Pathetic. If you want to make a good start in your life, recognize that you are no different from the worst sinner in the world. I am just as guilty as anybody else, even though I haven't put so many drops of poison as he did. But I deserve hell. I tell you, it's what I did to change my life radically. I know many people in CFC and other places who have never come to that place in their whole life. You see them 20 years later, they still think they're better than somebody else. They don't grow spiritually. You want to be like that? Or you want to be a radical, wholehearted Christian? Be a good Christian right from the beginning. Don't be a drifter. So that's important. Lord, I deserve hell. But I know with all my heart that you died for me. It was my sin that crucified you on the cross. You died because of my sin. I want to hate sin in my life because you died there. And I believe with all my heart that you're the son of God. You rose from the dead. I want you to come into my life. Rule my life as my Lord. I want you to give me your spirit to dwell in me. I want to be born again. And then you can be born of the Holy Spirit. Because God's word says in John 1 verse 12, it says, as many as received him, John 1 verse 12, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So if I receive him, he gives me the right to be a child of God. So faith means a committing of myself to him, not just believing. You can believe in somebody, but you may not commit yourself to him. It's like asking a woman at the marriage, uh, at the wedding ceremony, are you willing to give yourself to this man? That is faith. Supposing he, she says, yeah, I believe he's a good man. I think he's a very good man, actually. Oh, don't you want to marry him? No, that I have to think about. You can't be married. To, to, what is that woman choosing in marriage? She's saying, I'm going to change my name from today. I'm going to be Mrs. So-and-so. I'm going to, I'm not going to live with my parents anymore. I'm going to live with this man. I don't know where he's going to take me, but I'm going to go with him. That is true Christianity. You know what it, the word Christian 
if I could say it reverently, it's like saying Mrs. Christ. I got married. When did my wife take my name? When she got married to me. You can't take Christ's name till you're married to him. Of course, so many people can go around saying they are Mrs. Who didn't know my name, but they're not. And so many people can go around saying they are Christians, they're not. Are you married? Then you can take his name. Have you surrendered to him? Have you said, I'm yours now? Not just for one or two days. People don't get married for one or two days. They don't drift in and out of that fellow's house. <laughs> so many people are like that and they think they're Christians. They're not Christians. No, Christian, I've committed. Believe means that. That's the meaning of belief. I've committed myself totally to this person from this day. So I'm not asking you for any half-hearted committal. Total commitment. If you don't want to get married, go home and think about it. Come back tomorrow or 10 years later, whenever you're ready to be totally committed to Christ. That is what we preach in this church. That doesn't mean you're perfect. You may do something wrong, your husband will forgive you, but you're going to live with him. When a wife gets married, she's not saying, I promise I'll never do anything wrong from today. No. I may do 101 things wrong, but I'm going to be with you for the rest of my life. That's what she's saying. I'm not saying you'll never do anything wrong. I'm saying, do you want to be committed to Christ totally, permanently for the rest of your life? And you can be that today. And then, we can take baptism. Baptism is like a marriage certificate. You can't get married just by going and getting a marriage certificate, right? And you can't become a Christian just by getting baptized. After you get married, you get the marriage certificate. So after we give ourselves to Christ, we take baptism, which is like a testimony. I finished with my whole life. Now I belong to Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my bridegroom. He's my husband. I'm going to live with him forever. And uh, husbands and wives, they, if they are good husbands and wives, they'll talk a lot to each other. And that's what we had to do with Jesus from that day onwards. Talk to him. Listen to him. Talk to us from the Bible. And a good wife will never do anything that her husband does not like. Think of a husband and wife really love each other. And the wife says, I want to watch this movie. And the husband says, no, that's not a good movie. And she says, no, I don't care what you think. I want to watch it. You sit in your room, I'll watch by myself. You think they're going to have a happy marriage? Tell me. You know the believers who watch movies today that Jesus would never watch. They have sent off Christ out of the house. Lord, you get out of here. We are watching something we don't want you to see. They don't realize that. And that is why what such people have is religion, not Christ. God wants to use them mightily for his kingdom, but they, he cannot use them. Because their Christianity is in spurts. Sunday morning, they are married, they live with their wife, husband and say, oh, Lord, I love you so much. You're the greatest, you're the most wonderful, etc., 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 all the songs we sing. But Monday, you kick him out of the house. The Sunday, you come back again. This is how many Christians live. I'm not inviting you to a marriage like that. Let other people live like that. Don't you get into that type of marriage. What your husband does not like, you're not going to do from today. Do you want a Christianity like that? If not, 